What's going on, LEGO fans? Welcome back. Alex and Josh with you here. We're downstairs in the amusement park area of our city, and uh, we've been working diligently to set up as much automation as we can using uh, power function uh, motors uh, to get as many rides going on one switch. So we're going to get right into it. Our switch is right here. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. So we've got, uh, obviously, the roller coaster going there. Yep. Okay, we have our Ferris wheel our mixer, the carousel. I gotta, it's always cool to see the roller coaster go around. <laughs> so that's four. And our last one here, number five, is this little guy. I thought, hey, why not? Let's, let's, let's set him up. So he's got this axle going here uh, to this beast. Um, and so the switch, yeah, let's go here. The switch is going over here through the mixer. You've got these two extra large power function motors. And then you can kind of see the, the white axle there going to uh, the Ferris wheel. You got a chain reaching out there. That one was a crazy one, right, Josh? That was fun to, to figure yeah. out. I'm going to turn this thing off really quick here so I can get my hands in here a little bit. There we go. Uh, so yeah, here's the wire uh, from the battery pack. It's one battery pack, just this guy right here. And uh, that is running to those two motors. Got a lot of stuff going on inside of this guy right here that I'll, I'll open up and show you in just a moment here. And then just axles and chains uh, go out from that. So there's the little axle here going off to the side to this little guy. And there's the white axle going to the Ferris wheel. You have an axle, I think it is right, yeah, right here. You see that uh, black axle going here? That goes to the Ferris wheel. And um, I think that's, oh yeah, yeah. And then of course the chain, they're going to the roller coaster where Josh is. So Josh and I have got a, a lot of stuff out of the way so we can get a better look at how this is all kind of working. Uh, the two motors hook up here and here, and you'll notice that there's a chain actually connecting the two 24, uh, 24 tooth gears around it. And that just makes sure that they are equal um, in speed because uh, it might one motor might actually have a heavier load, so that makes sure that they share the load. Um, you'll notice that this has a, what gear is that? Is that a 12 tooth gear right here, Josh? Yes. 12 tooth gear, and that's draw, uh, driving, it looks like down here to the, um, uh, the carousel and the, uh, this goes right into the mixer, and of course this goes to this little guy right here. Um, then we have this chain also running. Uh, we found that the, we used a lot of chain pieces. Thank goodness we had those things. Uh, but that's driving it just outside of the gears there. And of course we have the big chain right there um, that is uh, going to the roller coaster. And of course the roller coaster does take uh, quite a bit of power, um, but uh, that's how we, uh, we set up this thing. Now we go across here with this axle, and there's a little bit of fun going on here. This is just a basic, I think that's another 12 uh, tooth axle, right Josh? Mm -hmm. To a 24, 24 tooth, is that what that is? Right yeah. there, yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, that seemed to work pretty well. I don't know all the exact ratios I've got going on here, guys. I just kind of, like, like I said, Josh and I just did trial and error on all this stuff until we yeah. felt like it was working. Actually, Josh probably knows them, but um, I just uh, threw them all together. I'm like, okay, that looks a little bit better. Look at the other side here really quick before we get into the details of the roller coaster. Uh, so we can see that there's, uh, there's two 24 tooth gears uh, running off that motor. So this is the same speed for this chain going here. And that's gonna go into, there's a 24 tooth gear receiving that. And that's turning these two angled axles in here, right there. And that actually just goes right into yet uh, another uh, 24 tooth gear uh, turning the chain. So look at it from the other side. And it's just a simple chain. I mean, it's a long chain, uh, taking advantage of all the chain links that we had over in our totes, and that takes into this little box right here. All right, let's go ahead and do an active demonstration. Go ahead and turn it on there, Josh. Now let me just take a moment to answer many of the questions that are being asked right now, and that is why didn't I automate the haunted house? Uh, that is because that thing takes a lot of power suddenly, and then no power at all. And let me just walk around and demonstrate this, and you guys who have this know what I'm talking about. So I have this on uh, a separate motor, a very old um, Technic motor, I think is what that is, it's connected to this speed regulator. So let me turn this thing on. So right now it's lifting it up. Now as it releases it, 
hey, no problem. Power is not a problem. But as soon as it hooks onto the elevator to lift it up, it requires a lot of power to do so, and it slows it down. See, so, you know, let me go ahead and just show this to you. It's going down. Now it's grabbing it, right? So if it were connected to all the other rides, you would see a performance issue with all the other rides as soon as it hooks onto that elevator. Um, now, to be fair, I didn't even try it <laughs> because it was just a pain to even run it this long uh, to, to hook it up, to just have it fail on me. So for now, it's independent, which is fine uh, from all the other rides. But hey, you know what? Five rides on one switch ain't bad. All right, let's turn that thing back on and just see it all working. Oh, turn on the 100 house for me, Josh. Cool. All right, there it is. Six rides moving with, you know, two regulars, but that's not too bad. It was a lot of fun to put together. Uh, Josh was a great help. It was fun. We ordered a bunch of uh, elements, uh, gears and, and axles and chains to make this all uh, come together. But it works pretty well, even this little guy. Now, obviously, this isn't practical for... A real amusement park to saying, okay, everybody ready? One switch and on. You know, it's not gonna, but it's just kind of fun when people come downstairs and you say, hey, see that orange switch? And I'll pull that up and see what happens. And uh, it's kind of fun to see the um, the oohs and ahs as they see everything start moving around <laughs> at various speeds. So uh, that's it. And also, yeah, this has been updated a little bit. Um, we added a little bus station here. Um, there's not a parking lot for our amusement park. So what we tried to do is make public transportation more accessible, obviously the bus stop. Uh, the train station is now here. Uh, the um, airport shuttle uh, is also uh, part of that as well. I'm gonna turn this off really quick. It's really loud to me. I don't know if it's loud to you guys or not, but uh, sometimes I feel like I have to yell. But anyway, oh, it's so nice and quiet now. And I redid the amusement park. Everything here has been redone. Uh, there's just, man, I need more space. So uh, there's, uh, it's just crazy to have this whole basement and still need more space. But anyway, uh, so yeah, some good uh, good things to come here, guys, with this rearrangement here. It's still a work in progress. Um, some updates here uh, to come over the weekend, hopefully, if I have the time. I have this thing called the day job. It gets in the way of this hobby, darn it. Uh, it's just kind of <laughs> how it goes, right? Uh, but thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it uh, uh, amusing, uh, entertaining, and educational as well, hopefully. Uh, and it sure was a lot of fun putting it together. And now that we're done, we're like, whew, all right, on to the next project. All right. Again, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.